when I took this picture, so in part of a, of a railway, it came to my mind of the bitter history. From 1880 to 1885, 17,000 men from the province of Guangdong, China, came to work on the western section of the railway through the treacherous terrain of the Canadian Rockies. Go to the next one, please. They were assigned to some of the most dangerous tasks and built the most treacherous sections, all while being paid only half as much as their co-workers of European descent. Many die from exhaustion, illness, or exposure. Next one. Next one. You all know the story of Hectax that uh, these workers had to pay to the Canadian government for working in Canada. So I don't want to repeat the story again. Next one. This is an insurance slide. This slide shows the factory shop office building act of 1914, which says, no Chinese person shall employ or in any capacity or have or have under his direction of control any female white person in any factory, restaurant, or laundry. So it's nice to see that the situation has completely changed nowadays. You know, even for the Chinese Canadian, we can hire, to, you know, white persons. And uh, if you look at the newspaper clipping, it issue a warning saying that the Chinese are beginning to encourage upon property in Port Moody, which should be kept free from them. If they obtain a foothold in the central part of the city, that neighborhood will be rendered uninhabitable for white people and property will decrease in value. You know, there was such mentality in the community at that time. Next, please. In fact, over the years, Chinese Canadians have contributed a lot to this country, including defending Canada. Some Chinese Canadians have well deserved Can Canada's recognition. Next one. In 2021, Viola Desmond was chosen as the first Canadian woman to appear on her own on the Canadian $10 note after being on a short list of five. Viola was first black person and a non-royal to feature on the Dora Ten bill. We have a Chinese Canadian candidate this time for the next Dora Five Bank note. This person's name is Wong Alexander Gam Yao, who was born in Canada in 1861. Used, he used his language skill in English and Cantonese to bridge the divide between Vancouver's English-speaking and Chinese com communities, actively involved in key Chinese community organizations. He was a voice for disenfranchised people and a positive influence in helping transform racialized attitude toward Chinese people in Canada. This time, why not have a Chinese Canadian on a Canadian band note? Next one. Not only Chinese Canadian were discriminated, discriminated against. During the Second World War, about 22,000 Japanese Canadian in British Columbia were sent to internment camps. They were subject to intense discrimination by a largely white Canadian society. The top picture shows the Japanese Canadians were sent to BC interior by train. And the picture on the right shows one of the internment camps. Among them, two were my friends. Uh, this 90-year-old lady, Shushi Suyama, and the other I'm going to show you, Su Kai. Both of them are residents of the Yihong Long-Term Care Center. In their 90s now, they still have nightmares on what happened to them during the time. As UC told CBC in a very recent interview arranged 
by us, she said. They kicked us out, jabs out. They used the racist terms. Next one. Su Kai says she was separated from the rest of her, of her family and cut off from the outside world. Su says, Su says she suffered much dis discrimination, even when she started a new life in Toronto after the war. Now imagine when this happened to both of them. Uh, Yushi was in her 14s and Su Kai was in her uh, 16. Uh, they are teenagers. Next one. Even after the Canadian government compensated the internment camp survivors in 1988, Susan Bryan said, it was really just a token because they lost everything. Next one. You heard the mayor talking about, you know, the anti-Asian hate crimes in the Toronto area. Nowadays in Toronto, we see a dramatic spike in anti-Asia hate crimes. Last year was the second in a row that Toronto police have reported a significant rise in overall hate-motivated verbal threats, physical assaults and vandalism, a trend that has also seen a high number of incidents of anti-Black racism and the continued targeting of the city's Jewish community as well. COVID-19, as we all know, remains a key contributing factor for hate crime locally, according to Toronto police. Yeah, we are talking about Asian Heritage Month today. Asian Heritage Month is an opportunity to celebrate the contribution that Canadian of Asian descent have made and continue to make to Canada's growth and uh, prosperity. At the same time, it's also an opportunity for us to understand and have discussions around issues of racism and systematic barriers that exist for marginalized and racialized group of Canadians. We see three key works there. The three key works are anti-racism, equity, and inclusion. What should we do? The Museum of Human Rights tells that the tools of change are those with which we are already endowed. Understanding, respect, courage, and an open heart. So these are very important. Understanding, respect, courage, and open heart. Outside the museum, there's a Gandhi statue. Gandhi also point out, first, they ignored you. That will happen to the uh, 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 Chinese Canadians in the earlier age. They ignore you. Then they laugh at you. Then they fight you. Then you win. That's the process we are going through. And finally, we will win. I'm concluding this presentation with what uh, Yi Hong, the largest Chinese Canadian charity uh, in Canada, said in the in a public statement. Uh, as you know, I work for Yi Hong as the president of his uh, foundation. Uh, the statement said, "We will educate ourselves to better understand the impact of systematic racism on Asian and other ethnic groups." It's time for us to raise our voices and talk about what racist, racism looks like, how it wounds us deeply. Moving forward, require collective, constructive collective action. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's speak up against racism, hate crime and discrimination. We want to have a more inclusive Canada. Thank you very much.